last talk of this session, which is the invited speaker talk. So let me yeah. introduce Dr. Diego Rosales. There you are. Mm -hmm. Diego Rosales is a senior scientist from yeah. Institute of Physics of Liquids and Biological Systems in Argentina. Uh, his research focuses on topological phases in magnetism, spin liquids, and unconventional phases of matter. Uh, in the last few years, his work has been centered on antiferromagnetic skirmions and exotic skirmion phenomena. He obtained his PhD in physics in 2010, specializing in quantum magnetism from the University of La Plata in Argentina. Following this, uh, he conducted groundbreaking research during his postdoctoral fellowship at the Commissariat à l'Energie Atomique in Grenoble, France. And in 2012, Dr. Rosales earned a permanent position as a researcher in CONICET back in Argentina. Uh, since then, he has led several projects on topological phases in frustrated magnetic systems, uh, supervised graduate students, and participated uh, and organized uh, numerous national and international scientific events. So welcome, Diego, and you can go ahead whenever you want. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, like good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm really happy. Uh, I want to thank the organizer for the kind invitation, uh, also for to the audience to be there uh, for your time. So okay, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah. It's yes. okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, in this talk, uh, well, my name is Diego Rosales, I'm from Argentina, and in this talk I'm going to tell you about uh, magnetic skirmions, uh, the role of uh, a chiral spin liquid background as a possible uh, a mechanism to stabilize the skirmion in presence of strong thermal fluctuations. Okay, let me go to the plan of my talk. Uh, the first part will be dedicated to a very short introduction to magnetic skirmions. I will give you a very simple picture of them, uh, basic properties, in particular topological charge. And then I will discuss possible application in one kind of spinmetallic device. And then I will, so I will show you a zoo of possible or alternative topological uh, textures like skirmion and skirmion or um, merons, etc. And the second part of my talk will be, will be dedicated to the main part of my talk will be dedicated to the skirmion characterization phenomena. I will discuss uh, more or less in detail the effect of magnetic field and thermal fluctuations and the role of a chiral spin liquid as a very nice background to enhance the stability of skirmions. And the final part is uh, about uh, a study of the different skirmion fluid phases from screaming gas to screaming crystal, and then the summary and conclusions. Okay. Okay, the, before the introduction, let me show you or discuss just a little bit about the possible magnetic structure that you know, maybe. Uh, the first example correspond to the standard ferromagnetic state, uh, where here in, on the left on your screen, you can see a cartoon of one uh, ferromagnetic state where all the magnetic moments are represented by red arrows here. In this state, all the magnetic moments are pointing in the same direction, in particular in the direction along the field direction. Okay, here. The second example corresponds to the simplest example corresponds to the interferomagnetic state, where neighbor and spin are pointing in different or opposite direction. Here we have a red arrow, arrows arrow along the field direction, and blue arrows and in the opposite direction. But uh, you know, uh, there are many other possibilities uh, like glasses, uh, spiral, disorder, spaces, etc. etc. What about a skirmion? In principle, a skirmion is just another kind type of magnetic structure. This is a cartoon, one skirmion. This is the background for a magnetic background. Uh, the center of the skirmion here is represented by the blue arrow in the opposite direction to the external field B. And this is the edge of the skirmion where all the magnetic moments are pointing along the field direction and between the center or, and the edge, there is a smooth modulation of the magnetic moments. 
Uh, this is a single theremium, but you can build, you can find actually in real materials, arrangement, periodic arrangement of this texture, forming a skirmium crystal or skirmium lattices like this. This is an example, a card two of an hexagonal lattice. Okay, now I will give you an I will go to the introduction, a uh, very short introduction. Uh, Skirmions were presented, introduced by Tony Skirmion in 1962 in the context of nuclear physics. And uh, this part, this is a very nice paper. Here I put a few very important uh, papers related with the first application of these ideas of the Skirmion in condensed matter physics. Uh, I think that the, the main message of this talk is that Skirmion are a particle like topological excitation in ferromagnets. Uh, in particular, perhaps the most important characteristic of the skirmion is that they are characterized by a topological number. Topological invariant here is Q, which is, with this expression is the local moment in a, any system. And the idea of this topological invariant is that it's related with a mapping, mathematical mapping between a real space, for example, here, two dimensional space to the sphere, and the number of time that any, in particular, any configuration wrapped sphere is Q. For example, in the case of the ferromagnetic or antiferromagnetic state, this quantity is zero. This is why we saw we, we say that a ferromagnetic or antiferromagnetic state is a trivial configuration, but in the case of the skirmion, this quantity is minus one, for example. Okay, but uh, the, the real rise of the skirmion was in 2009 with the first uh, indirect observation this detector in this compound, MNSI. Mulbauer and company showed that in the phase diagram, temperature and magnetic field, they found a specific region in the phase diagram where neutral scattering present in the reciprocal space present these characteristics, uh, triple Q structure in the intensities, which Basically, basically, sorry, is related with the superposition of three spirals in different direction, which is related with the presence of this skirmion. This is why we, I, I say that this is an indirect observation. But now you can see skirmion using different techniques. Here I put a few of them. And you can see in real space now, the uh, periodic arrangement of these uh, skirmions. And you can see the size or the, diff, the distance between the skirmions, a few nanometers. Okay, and, <clears throat> and there are a lot of material hosting the skirmion with different categories or different properties like metals, semiconductors, or insulators with different uh, critical temperatures and different size of the skirmion uh, since uh, uh, a few nanometers to 100 nanometers, for example. Uh, the category is related with the uh, main ingredient to, in to induce this skirmion. For example, in chiral magnets like MNSI, the main ingredient is the Janoschinsky Mauritian interaction, which is related with the spin orbit coupling. Mm -hmm. And in stereosymmetric materials, uh, the main ingredient is uh, perhaps uh, the anisotropic interaction or dipolar interactions. And it is possible to induce the uh, skirmion at the interface between metallic multilayers, where the, uh, at the interface, a strong, a strong a, a, a spin orbit coupling, sorry, induce a strong Janoschinsky Mauritian interaction. What about the potential application of skirmions? Okay, in this part, I, I, I put uh, a few very, very nice reviews related with the possible application of skirmions, recent uh, reviews, uh, because their properties, uh, this texture present or are very attractive for a technological application. Here I put only three very important uh, advantages of the skirmion. The first one is the small size because it's around a few nanometers compared with the standard magnetic domains or magnetic bubbles. The second one is the stability because these quantities are topological, meaning that there is, there is a topological invariant, topological charge. This uh, topology of the texture induces an extra protection under small perturbation. And they are easy to manipulate. They can be, people can control, you know, People control the uh, magnetic skirmion using electric field or magnetic field and very small low uh, current density. People are trying to use this skirmion in this kind of devices. This is an animation I made where the idea, this is this, this uh, device 
It's called the racetrack memory. The idea is to create a schema in one side of this track by the injection of a spin polarized current and then move schema or the schema pattern using another uh, spin polarized current and then detect the configuration in another part or edge of the of this track. This is a very nice idea, very nice animation, but you know that always there are uh, many inconvenience to, to, to use uh, uh, physics in applications. Here, I want to highlight only two which are related with my recent research. The first one is the uh, ischemia Hall effect, but maybe you know uh, the Hall effect, not a standard Hall effect of electron in a magnetic field. Uh, here is the same idea. Now, uh, the problem is that there is a, an effect in magnetic field induced by the topology of the texture. And then when the move along the track, they present a perpendicular deflection to the motion. And then it's, um, it's not good to, to, to create these kind of devices. This is why people are trying to use a different kind of topological texture. Here, this is a zoo, recent zoo of uh, possible textures with different properties. Uh, with the idea to reduce this Schirmian Hall effect. Uh, I want to highlight only this one, antiferromagnetic Schirmian, which is, uh, I, I work a lot in this kind of uh, textures. Uh, the idea is that we can create uh, a Schirmian lattice, a periodic arrangement of the Schirmian in different sub-lattices, for example, of one layer. And this is a cartoon of a lateral view of, of one antiferromagnetic Schirmian. Uh, uh, blue correspond to a uh, schemion lattice, and in red is another schemion lattice in different sub layers. In different sub lattice, sorry. Uh, I have worked a lot in this kind of topic uh, in two dimensional material with uh, where the Janoshinki Morisha interaction is uh, responsible to induce this uh, texture, or in, uh, in symmetric material, in three dimensional symmetric materials. Where here a different kind of anisotropic interaction induced the Shiki Morisha into the ischemia lattice. Okay. And the last one is by the competition between antiferromagnetic couplings. Okay. But the, the main point of my talk is related with the second component, which is the stability under thermal fluctuation. Okay. okay. The question I want to uh, answer is how to obtain a screaming lattice. This is a screaming lattice, this is a cartoon. Again, there are different, there are uh, multiple mechanisms to stabilize screaming lattice. The most simple way to get the, the, this configuration is by the competition between ferromagnetic coupling and the Lushik and Marisha interaction plus the cement term. Okay, this is the typical Hamiltonian for this uh, situation where we have uh, the uh, and exchange coupling between magnetic moments. This is the Yanoshiki Morisha along the perpendicular or along the plane, the layer. And this is a cementer. Uh, but another possibility corresponds, for example, the magnetic fluctuation, competing interaction, and isotropic interaction, uh, multiple spin chiral interaction, and they call it. Okay. But the my idea is to try to go in detail in this phase diagram. This is a typical phase diagram. Temperature magnetic field with different phases and low temperature. Uh, low temperature, this is H, correspond to the helical state with the typical one-dimensional arrangement of uh, magnetic moments here. Uh, high field here, full polarized regime. We have this uh, pattern where all the magnetic moments are pointing along the field direction, which is in this case is perpendicular to your screen. And an intermediate magnetic field, we have the screen lattice with this typical arrangement, periodic arrangement of the kilometers, okay? Let me show you what happened now when we study the evolution of this uh, schirmian lattice as a function of temperature. I will show you a very short, very short uh, video. This is the specific heat versus temperature, okay? And uh, this is the lattice, uh, the color corresponds in red, autos plane, along the field direction and blue in the opposite direction to the external magnetic field. And I will start in the paramagnetic state here. Here, correspond to a temperature in a paramagnetic state or paramagnetic phase without any character of order. And you can see that now after the transition, we arrive 
to the scrimian crystal or scrimian lattice. Okay. The, the point here is that a high temperature, we have a disordered state without any kind of order. After phase transition, we arrive to the scrimian crystal. Okay. Let me show you what happened now. A low temperature, this phase diagram, but now as a function of magnetic field. If we start a high field here in the full polarized regime, uh, sorry for this, okay. The situation is, is this. All the magnetic moment now in white, sorry, are pointing along the field direction. This is why all the lattice here, the portion of the lattice is white. But as the magnetic field is decreased here in this region, for example, this boundary, you can see the merchant of different, uh, a small number of skirmion in black here. This is, this is a kind of gas of skirmion. As the magnetic field is decreased again here, we arrive to the skirmion crystal here. Okay, this one. Okay. Finally, a very low field, we arrive to the one dimensional helical state or spirals. The question we have in mind is try to induce this sequence of uh, different phases of skirmion, but now as a function of temperature. You can see that this situation is possible a low field where the uh, entropy of the system is very small, very low temperature. The, the entropy of the system is small. But here, the presence of strong trigonal fluctuation is difficult to compete the uh, disordered state with our paramagnetic state. Then our motivation to solve this problem is try to induce, to move this part of the phase, full polarized, polarized regime, to this part. But to do this, we need to increase the entropy of this ferromagnetic state. This is a completely a complicated situation, but we need we have in mind one possible situation solution, a cooperative paramagnet. The idea of a cooperative paramagnet is a state this with disordered phase, but with large entropy. And they present in particular dipolar correlation at low temperature. This uh, manifestation in the dipolar correlation is uh, when you see, for example, neutral scattering or a uh, structure factor in, the, in this specific phase. You can see the typical or characteristic pinch points at a specific position in reciprocal space, which is a manifestation of the dipolar correlation. In particular, if we use uh, this Hamiltonian with uh, exchange coupling, from magnetic exchange coupling, plus the Roshinki Morisha along the C direction, uh, you will stain uh, some kind of particular uh, spin liquid, which is a chiral spin liquid. It's a ferromagnetic state disorder with dipolar correlation. It's a really strange situation. Then we combine these two ingredients in this Hamiltonian. The first part is the responsible of the spin liquid state, the chiral spin liquid state okay, here, when you can see the pinch point plus the uh, skirmion part related with the presence of triple Q structure or black peaks at low temperature. And we work, uh, I have done this work in collaboration with uh, Flavia Gomez Alvarazin from La Plata, Argentina, Pierre Pujol from uh, Toulouse, France, uh, Ludovic Chauvert from Bordeaux, France. And this is the effect diagram we have obtained. And then in the last part of my talk will be dedicated just to show you a few very funny videos related with the evolution of the system now in this situation. And we start with this part from uh, the evolution of the system starting in a paramagnetic state, uh, uh, moving as a function of temperature. Here again is the specific heat in blue, the blue curve. Uh, at this point, for example, here we have a ferromagnetic state without any kind of order, but at this point, we can see this pattern. Sorry, because maybe it's too small, but here you can see in red uh, a background without any kind of order, but we are in the chiral spin liquid phase with the characteristic pinch point here in the of the structure factor. And as the temperature is decreased, you can see the emergence of individual skirmion here. This is one here, and here again. If we continue to decrease temperature now in the, at this point, 
you can see the margins on more screen. The number is 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 uh, is uh, increasing as the temperature is decreased. Okay. Now at this point, for example, you can see uh, more skirmion, more and more. We start in some kind of gas of skirmion at this point, and we finish in the skirmion crystal at low temperature. So let me uh, show you a video of this evolution starting. At this point, we have a very small number of skirmion, and we finish at this point in the skirmion crystal. The difference, if you remember the previous video, is that now we have well-defined skirmion, and the number is not too large. It's a very small number of skirmion. And now we have a skirmion crystal or solid. Okay, this is the difference. Why we have this situation? And the main point here is this red background. This red background is a chiral spinning wave state. It's a ferromagnetic disorder state with dipolar correlations. Then, because this situation, we study the possible transition between, between these three, for example, three phases or fluid phases between solid, liquid, and gas skirmion. And we study, uh, apply all the uh, Taylor net triangulation to identify the center of the skirmions, and we compute the or an order specific order parameter to detect the topology of the phase, and compute the different or two different correlation function, position and, and orientation in order to detect different phases of these skirmions. Uh, Okay, maybe this is a little boring, but we compute the correlation function in different at different temperatures here as a function of the distance. And we compute, uh, we identify the different value of the exponent in the correlation functions. And we identify three or four different phases. Uh, okay, the first one at high temperature is a gas of skirmion, and then a liquid with this characteristic uh, behavior in the correlation function. Uh, perhaps an intermediate, a very small, uh, in a very small window, an excited phase of skirmion, and then solid or crystal. Okay, this is basically the idea. We start in a gas with a very small uh, density of skirmion, and then we finish uh, in a in a skirmion crystal. The final, um, I think I have time. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you have a four minutes left. Okay, thank you. Uh, the final part of my talk, I will show you uh, a very funny video of this new phase we found. Uh, here we start now in this uh, paramagnetic state at a high temperature. Then we pass through this uh, full polarized regime where basically we have a carrier spin state. Uh, with the polar correlation in green, we are right to the fluid phase. Uh, then we can go through a gas, solid, or liquid phase, depending on the magnetic field. And then we finish in this BG phase. It is a bimeral glass phase because here the dynamics of uh, of the system is very slow, comparable with a glass behavior. Okay, then again, here we have, uh, I have uh, the lattice in this regime. Here is the chiral spinning wave state with the polar correlation. Here again, these two peaks correspond to the, the transition between different phases. Here again, we are in this point, at this point in this uh, green, uh, blue region. I will move to the directly to the skirmion gas here. You can see uh, a gas uh, of only one, a very uh, low density. No, it's low density of <laughs> skirmions. It's just one skirmion dancing in this uh, chiral background. The point is that we we can uh, obtain well-defined skirmion in presence of, presence of strong thermal fluctuation because it's a final temperature here. Let me show you what happened 
we continue to decrease temperature here. Mm -hmm. There is some kind of uh, elongation of the skirmion. Right? It's like a worm where the topological charge of the skirmion is at the edge of this worm, this part and this part. The point here is that this configuration presents a very slow dynamics in the correlation or self, -co self correlation. Yeah. And <clears throat> okay. I think that I'm okay. Uh, this is a summary and conclusion of my, my talk. I think that the most important is that it is possible to induce well-defined skirmions in a finite or in presence of uh, strong thermal fluctuations. Uh, and the main ingredient to, to get this behavior is uh, a chiral spin liquid as a background. It's a good candidate to uh, enhance the stability of this individual screen. Uh, okay. As a third uh, uh, conclusion, that we we possible we we found a possible excited phase between the 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 liquid and solid phase of uh, fluid of the skirmions. and for future we want to study or analyze the interplay between electrons and this kind of fluid skirmion fluid phases. Okay, uh, this is a list of uh, recent collaborator I I'm working with. Uh, Flavia Gomez Alvaracín from La Plata, Argentina, Pierre Pujol, Ludovic Schober from France, Maria Morigna and Milan Sukovic from um, Slovak Republic, uh, Oksana Zaharko from the Porsche Institute in Switzerland, and Roberto Troncoso from uh, Norway University. Um, okay. Thank you for your attention and question are welcome. Thank you very much, Diego. It was really interesting. So is there any question? Sophie? Um, hi, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, that was really interesting. You can hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Um, so, the, so the chiral spin liquid background, um, yeah. how does how does the chirality come into it? It's kind of like hard for me to imagine um, how the spins are behaving. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry, can you hear where? Um, so in the chiral spin liquid, yeah, yeah, background that that you have, how does the chirality come into that? Like how how can I think of you you have a ferromagnetic if you just had a paramagnetic phase and you have you know some some random fluctuations of of the, those spins um yeah. as you go exactly. to a liquid sorry yeah no no yeah yeah I understand the question no, or maybe the point is that we have a ferromagnetic correlation we have a, a... The ground state corresponds to a disordered state with high degeneracy. There are uh, the point is that there are ferromagnetic correlations between spins, which is magnetic moments, and uh, if you compute the there is there is an extra degeneracy between ferromagnetic state in this chiral spin liquid state, ferromagnetic state and a chiral state, like an umbrella configuration. In this state. The ground state corresponds to uh, two possible situations. The generality between ferromagnetic, where all the magnetic moments are pointing in the same direction, and a chiral state like an umbrella, local umbrella. Because of this, we have a disordered state, but with uh, ferromagnetic correlations. Okay. And so can I, I can think of that as like locally it set itself into a helical sort of into something that's twisted a little bit but then it can fluctuate over a longer wavelength like um you you get some local correlations that then set this 
uh, you know, the, the spins wanting to be at a certain angle, neighboring spins wanting to be at a certain angle in a chiral system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's happening locally. I was just trying to picture how, like, think how to picture the chiral spin liquid. Okay, okay, but the guy has been liquid. I, I don't know very well the question, but uh, I don't understand the question really. But I think that we are thinking about the how is it is locally, the chirality, the relation between chirality and correlation functions. Yeah. Okay. The point here in this state is that locally, they present a local chirality, not zero chirality. Like an umbrella. An umbrella is that you have three spin pointing in three different direction, a specific configuration like an umbrella. But the ground states present a degeneracy, extra degeneracy be between this state with the same energy, degeneracy and with the same energy. Okay. This umbrella configuration with ferromagnetic configuration. If you compute the energy of these two, those, these two situations, uh, you can obtain this degeneracy in the ground state, this chiral state. Okay, I think I think I understand better. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Very nice. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you again, Diego, and thank you all the participants.